people and want to thank you all for joining. We have a great program for you this evening with awesome speakers. And tonight our agenda is as follows. We're going to start off with a safety moment. Then we're going to talk about a brief update on the COVID situation and the health issues. Next, we're going to have council announcements, then some information on Granite Base Camp, move on to membership, and then fundraising, and wrap up with clarity on national bankruptcy. So it's a packed agenda, but it's a lot of great stuff. So let's get going and start off with our safety moment. Tonight, we're talking about prohibited and unauthorized activities. A summer of scouting is fast approaching. Do your units know that there are activities and programs that should not be part of any scouting experience? I know that we're going to be posting some information in the chat that you could also access about these different activities. There are activities that should not be part of any scouting experience, or there are limits for when some activities should be introduced. How you can find out about them and why they are on the list is what this safety moment's all about. The first question to ask is, is the activity in a handbook or other current literature of the Boy Scouts of America? If it is, great. Then you know it's part of the BSA program. If not, then ask, does it support the values of the Boy Scouts of America? If the activity helps to create good conduct, respect for others, and honesty, then most likely it's good to go. The next test is, is it age appropriate? For instance, by design, the program limits the, youth, the use of throwing knives and tomahawks to youth in Scouts BSA and above, and limits the use of pocket knife in Cub Scoutings to bears and above. A list of age appropriate guidelines is in the appendix of the Guide to Safe Scouting. Also in the chat, uh, on tonight's program. So let's say the activity you want isn't in the handbook, but you think it supports the values of the BSA and appears to be age appropriate. The last test is, is it prohibited or unauthorized? Look at the list of prohibited activities in the Guide to Safe Scouting. As of right now, there are 21 activities that are on the prohibited list. These include failing to deliver program as designed or contained in the BSA literature and common sense restrictions that include extreme sports, pyrotechnics, shooting or throwing at each other and power tool use. This list is not comprehensive, but it serves as a list of prohibited activities and offers a broad sense of what is not allowed as a scouting activity. Finally, there are some activities that may be restricted at the unit level, but are allowed as part of a council level activity. These include all-terrain vehicle and personal watercraft use and the pistol safety and marksmanship program for youth in Scouts BSA. Additionally, certain activities are specifically authorized at high adventure bases, such as crossbows at the Summit Bechtel Reserve and reloading ammunition at Philmont Scout Ranch. So we have more resources for you, but please be sure to check these out. Your unit will want to know not only what you can do, but also what's not something you want to do. So if you also have more questions, please reach out to us. All right, and that leads us into the next topic, which is kind of related in some ways in that it's an update on health and the COVID situation from Dr. Alan Kaplan. He is our camp medical expert. He's also a, physi a physician and a fellow non-practicing attorney, I'm guessing. So I'm turning it over to you, Alan, uh, for any updates you have on uh, the COVID situation. Thank you, Michael. The uh, Risk Management Committee has been uh, working throughout the past year as uh, this very uh, changing situation has occurred. Uh, we've attempted to uh, get resources and deal with the science uh, of the COVID infections and what the best course of actions are. To do that, we've reached out to a number of 
additional consulting activities, uh, evaluated the CDC guidelines, as well as um, the testing experts that are running programs across the country for camps. Uh, we recently contracted with uh, North Shore uh, Clinical Laboratories out of Chicago uh, to provide testing services, which are of no cost to either the scouts or to the council. Um, so they handle all of the financial aspects of that uh, without uh, causing any uh, financial burden on uh, any of us or on the council itself. Um, we are in a constant process of reevaluating the programs as new data arrives. Uh, some of the questions that have arisen are uh, in regard to people who have been vaccinated since we're now broaching about 50% of the country and, and vaccinations have been opened up to uh, scouts as young as 12 years of age. Uh, and this may change some of the uh, approaches that we take. Uh, these changes may occur between now and when camp actually opens. Some of the science that we've been looking at in this regard is that uh, while folks who have been vaccinated have a uh, very low risk of infection, that there is clearly a carrier rate within the, that population of individuals. And uh, one of the best ways of protecting the camp is to uh, test uh, individuals across the board to make sure that we don't have scouts arriving at camp uh, who may be infected and thus potentially transmitted to others. Um, we want this to be a, a great season, a fun season, and we don't want to see any of our camps closed down uh, at that point. Um, some of the science that goes along with this is that the the tests generally take about three days to become positive. So we're looking at testing in advance of coming in, uh, whether this will, with the science that's coming out in the next uh, two to three weeks, whether this will hold across the board or not is being evaluated on a weekly basis by the risk management committee. Uh, and then once uh, scouts and leaders are in the camp, uh, we're looking at a retesting program to make sure that those three days that elapse between the first test and subsequent tests uh, have not become positive. Uh, but I would just stress that we're continuing to look at a very fluid situation in terms of recommendations. Uh, we are doing our best to avoid any uh, political or economic considerations as long as we can provide uh, testing services and uh, and no charge to, to scouts or their leadership. And finally, we've done extensive work on in-camp um, programs, specifically masking uh, for cohort groups. When you're functioning with your cohort, uh, there are a number of conditions where you will not need to, to be masked uh, as long as you're with the cohort. If uh, we start mixing groups, then masking becomes important at that point. Uh, we know that, that uh, there will be many scouts who are not vaccinated um, and therefore particularly in the Cub Scout group uh, so that the masking and, and social distancing becomes very important as preventative uh, matters in that regard. So I'll turn it over to Jay and see if he has anything further that he'd like to add from our risk management approach. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Kaplan. And I just want to reiterate the fact that throughout this entire process, we really appreciate the adaptive nature in which our leaders have uh, resolved the periodic guidance that we've sent out and the revisions to that guidance. And uh, as an entire organization, we've done really, really well uh, in, the, in the main in terms of ensuring that our scout units are safe that they've been doing the right thing and that they've been protecting their scouts. And, you know, we do still see uh, some scouts testing positive. So we are still receiving incident reports. Uh, so it is happening out there. 
Uh, but the good news thus far is that we haven't seen really any uh, vectoring on any grand scale uh, with our district activities or, or some of our local units. So our, our hope is in the next couple of weeks, we get back to doing the business of scouting at scout camp. And I'm really excited about the fact that we are reopening and that uh, with really good due diligence on the part of all of our leaders, hopefully we'll have a, a safe summer. So we know this has been a challenge and we know that there's a lot of views and opinions out there about these issues. Um, please be patient with, with us as we continue to, as Dr. Kaplan mentioned, follow the science. Uh, thanks, Jay and Dr. Kaplan. We do have um, one question, particularly around, you know, just some more clarity on uh, the COVID testing for overnight campers, day campers, staff, kind of just, uh, you know, elevator speech, if we could just summarize what is, um, you know, exactly the expectation that uh, campers should look forward to when they come to camp this summer as it relates to COVID tests. Jay, do you want to speak on the policy or did you want me to? Yeah, you can speak to the policy as it currently stands uh, in terms of what we've put out. Uh, currently, we're looking at uh, testing uh, about three to, three days prior to coming into camp uh, to exclude any individual so a parent doesn't have to show up with a scout who may be carrying an infection and uh, having to turn them away. And then once they're in camp uh, on that first day, we would have uh, a testing available. Um, we also have the uh, antigen tests. Those are the PCR tests, by the way, which are accurate and will not be influenced by somebody who's had a vaccination. The um, antigen tests uh, will often be positive if you've had the vaccination or if you've had an exposure. Uh, so that is not a good screening tool, but if a scout is known to be negative and then develops symptoms while in camp, we do have the rapid uh, antigen testing available in the camps that we can uh, determine whether someone has uh, developed positivity. Um, if a, the antigen tests are less accurate than the PCR tests, so we will be confirming any positives with the PCR uh, that occur. Yeah, and, and just to add to, and I know Derek is typing in an answer as well, but uh, the resident camp is where the testing will currently occur. Uh, the day camp, we're going to be using uh, monitoring uh, reports uh, to the day camp, self-monitoring uh, submissions for the day camp. So uh, the antigen tests will be available, uh, but uh, the testing is not occurring with the day camp staff. Uh, it'll be self-monitoring. Tyler, have you seen any other questions come through? No, we got them all for now, and uh, we'll address them if more pop in as we go. But uh, the floor is everybody's. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kaplan, for joining us. And thank you, Jay. We'll have you up a little later. And next up, we have our council commissioner, Mr. John Arrico, to give us some council announcements. John, it's all yours. All right. Uh, so this will be uh, very brief. And for those of you that know me are probably shocked by that. So, um, but just a real quick update, unit of honor patches uh, have finally arrived. They're in the process of being sorted. Uh, in some cases, um, if you have already reached out to me, I've made arrangements to have those delivered uh, to you already, uh, but we are in the process of getting those sorted and we will get those patches out to your respective districts for distribution. Um, there have been some questions with respect to the hikeathon that we held last uh, last fall, uh, whether or not we are going to have that again this year. And the answer is, is yes, we will. Uh, we will have it again. Uh, we're in the process of, uh, of, of, of planning for that. And it will be set up in a very similar format in terms of how it was done last year uh, by and through using the Mobile Cause app uh, for that hikeathon. Um, there won't be any changes in terms of how that's ran or run. Um, so, you know, pretty much you can expect uh, a very similar format there. Um, 
just want to let everybody know uh, if you don't already do know so we are um, running monthly uh, youth protection training uh, that is currently being conducted uh, via zoom by our council training team uh, we're doing this as a convenience um, believe it or not people get actually more out of the in-person training than they do via the online uh, training it's the same information uh, but it, uh, the on, uh, in-person one or at least the zoom one at least allows you the opportunity to ask questions or get clarifying answers to some things that maybe you aren't clear on. Uh, and lastly, I just want to thank all the units who participated in the maple syrup and pancake mix sale this past spring. Uh, at, from a gross revenue perspective, uh, we had about $26,000 in gross revenue. Um, almost $8,000 went back to the units. Uh, we were able to provide, I believe, six youth with um, uh, camperships, $50, uh, $50 camperships as a result of that, uh, of that sale. And we also, uh, there were a number of units, and I apologize, I don't have, have the exact number, that also because they had sold over $1,000 in product, uh, they will be getting some DWC insurance credits uh, towards recharter. So thank you for everybody that participated in it, uh, greatly appreciated and that sale will continue to happen again uh, next year as well. So we're looking forward to uh, another successful year next year. Thank you. Thank you, John. And next up, we have some information on our Granite Base Camp with Allison Beatty, our general manager, and Derek Wirtz, our chief operating officer. So the floor is yours. Hello, all. Derek, I didn't know if you wanted to say hi. Um, so I just want to give um, some numbers before I get kind of into the whys and uh, what we are doing really at Granite Base Camp. So far this year, we have held 36 events uh, beginning in January. We have had a total of 633 visitors between um, merit badges, weekend events, um, and other events that we've held. And we have uh, offered 23 merit badges. Uh, so some of the whys of Basecamp is that um, our intent with this program is to remove some of the barriers to scouting. For example, today I had a great conversation with Chris Yates, who is uh, the head of our uh, fishing committee. Chris is working on building a kit that allows, that has, within it has, I think he decided on 25 rods and reels that are set up and to, to be used by kids, um, whether they be scouts or not so that with all of the necessary tackle. Um, he, he'll, he will tell you I'm the first one. He asks me questions and I say, uh, you know I have no idea what you're talking about, right? But that's exactly why Basecamp exists because now there'll be a kit with all of the instructions and everything somebody would need to know to, in order to either run a bear goes fishing for your cubs or um, fishing merit badge for uh, older, older kids. Um, I kind of explain our weekend program as an open house style of camp. So you show up at camp and you usually meet me at the stop sign um, and I give you a map and I give you a plan for what's being offered that day. It might be, uh, or we almost always have outdoor skills open at Fort Friendship where people can learn how to build a fire. Uh, I always have make and take fire starters. I don't know why, but I love that activity. Um, and they can also, uh, they learn about the shapes of fires and fire safety and general things that can happen there. Um, also, I always have mini golf open. Sometimes I have staff there and at that point they talk about the science of mini golf and using angles to, to better your golf game. Some of you might enjoy some time out there for your general golf game, not even just your mini golf game. Um, and so it's really up to you and your family what you, to go to and enjoy what you love. Um, and so we typically have between six and eight areas open, depending on staffing and the number of people in camp for a day. Um, I love, love, love the scouting curriculum. I've been super, super fortunate over the last two years to really be able to dive deep both into the Cub curriculum and the Merit Badge curriculum. Um, and so what this program does is it takes this curriculum and it opens it up to everybody. And it gives kind of like a slice into what scouting can be. And so maybe we get a family that comes in and their kiddo really loves shooting sports. I mean, I remember when I was in camp school, Jay will, will agree. Uh, 
there was a gentleman who was on staff and he repeatedly told us over and over and over again, they, they come to camp for the um, arrows, for the BBs and the fire, right? And so who doesn't love shooting sports and fire? And so those things will get kids hooked into scouting and that becomes sort of like a gateway um, into our program, whether they are there every weekend, which we would love, or whether they're like, wow, this is really something for me and I wanna join a unit. Um, it is a great recruitment tool. So because Granite Base Camp is open to the public, you can bring a den and bring a friend. Um, it is open to all and there is activities for everyone ages five to 105 and there are new things every weekend. Um, I'm trying to add small things right now, but definitely for summer, we'll have outdoor cooking. Um, the OA weekend a couple weekends ago did so much work. Um, and if you were there, thank you so, so much for all the work that was done. Um, but we have a new outdoor cooking area. We have a new ax yard. Uh, we have a new pine, or we're working on, still working on a pioneering area. Um, and we built a tomahawk range. But as Michael said, that will only be open to Scouts BSA age. We will, I promise, we will follow the rules in the Guide to Safe Scouting. Um, and then there's a value to Scouts and Families. So for just $150 a year, now, let me back up, for $48 a year just for your Scout or $150 a year for your whole family, um, if you buy your adventure card, you can come any Saturday and you can come for an hour, you can come for six hours. It doesn't matter to us. Um, we want you to come and do what works for you at Granite Base Camp. Um, and also the $150 uh, family pass co covers four people. You don't have to name who those people are. It covers any four people. So it could be one parent and three kids. They don't all have to be yours. Bring your friends. Um, it, it could be any four people. You can always stop by in and work um, on some advancement. So for example, if I go um, over the winter, we had a winter sports area. Uh, so we had skates and we had, that was a, that's a barrier for some people to doing the skating merit badges that they just don't have skates. Well, so I had skates for everybody to wear. Um, we shoveled off the pond. Um, I made curling stones uh, as an opportunity for people to try a new sport, but also we had everything necessary to earn skating merit badge and the sports uh, cub adventure, as well as the games tigers play adventure and all of the play adventures within the Cub Scout curriculum. So um, every area has all of the requirements from our curriculum that can be met at that area. So for example, there's a scout I've been working with, uh, Nick, he comes to camp almost every weekend and unless his unit is doing something, John's smiling because he knows exactly who I'm talking about. Um, and uh, mom's been working with me and I work with Nick on a, a lot because he loves to come to camp and he needs one requirement. I have been carrying a Coleman lantern in my truck for a month. So this kid can light a Coleman lantern because that's all he has left for fire safety. Luckily, he camped with his unit this weekend and they took care of it. Um, and now I just have to help mom and the unit figure out how to uh, mark it off. But good thing, I, I can send him the scout book. So uh, that is kind of a quick and dirty uh, about Granite Base Camp so far this year and what we have to offer. I would love to answer any questions you might have. Hey, Allison, one uh, question that came up, and I know we have some exciting stuff with uh, day camp this summer at GSR. Could you talk a little bit about uh, plans for the older youth programs and what to expect later uh, throughout the summer and into the fall? Sure. Um, so plans for that's thank you for bringing that up. Um, so like I said, uh, I know that Camp Carpenter has been a cub camp forever. And so many of you think that uh, a lot of what we are offering is really just for cub age kids. However, like I said, this program is open for anyone five to 105. So bring your grandma, bring your grandpa. I want them to come and play. Some uh, day camp uh, opportunities this summer. Yes, we have a six to 10 group, which is our traditional uh, day camp group, but we're also gonna run an 11 to 14 group. Um, each week of that group uh, of, for that group is themed. So there's a mountain bike week, a canoe week, a kayak week, cooking week, um, and two weeks of adventure week, which are just kind of choose, there'll be a different adventure every day, as well as uh, build your own uh, fort building camp, which for uh, all of those that weren't adventure camp, so mountain biking, cooking, kayaking, canoeing, 
and fort building all tie into the scouting curriculum. Um, mountain biking, they'll be working towards cycling. If you have a scout who's attending and they want to work toward their cycling merit badge, they'll be able to do that. Um, cooking, canoeing, kayaking, and then fort building is actually pioneering. So on Monday, they're going to make a ton of rope. They're going to make rope like their lives depend on it. And then they're going to learn about uh, knots and they're going to learn about lashings. And then they're going to spend the rest of the week collecting um, downfall and building a uh, tree house no higher than my hip because my hip is much closer than four feet from the ground, which again, back to Michael's uh, safety moment is safe in the safe guide to scouting. And uh, they will get to build and show off their tree fort that they build right in our pioneering area. Um, if it's deemed safe, we'll leave it there for a while, then we'll take it down so a new group of kids can do that same thing. Uh, moving on into the fall, uh, we'll be open Saturdays beginning the Saturday after Labor Day through um, at least through um, Thanksgiving uh, and potentially depending on weather and um, activities uh, into December. As well as we'll be offering merit badges. Um, I just put out merit badges through the end of June, um, but I'll continue offering merit badges through July, August um, and every, you know, all through the year. Awesome, as a follow up for the older day programs, um you know, in the program planning, what's a great place for uh, people to uh, find out about these weekend events so they can plan their uh, unit calendar if they wanna make it a, a full function event for the unit? Sure, thanks, Tyler. Um, so you can find all of the Granite Base Camp um, dates on experiencebasecamp.org. And something that's super exciting about um, that is that we, there are actually three base camps in New England now um, as part of a collaboration with the Spirit of Adventure Council, the Bos uh, Eastern Massachusetts Boston Area Council, as well as the Narragansett Council. Um, each one of those also have a base camp. And if you have an adventure card, your adventure card is reciprocal to all three base camps. And so uh, weekend programming is free at those locations as well. Yeah, we have uh, two other great questions. Uh, Granite Base Camp is a very important topic, so I want to spend some time on it. Um, can you talk about uh, the value add with the adventure card as it relates to pricing for merit badge workshops and the, the difference between kind of the specialty workshops and the, and the merit badge workshops and how that pricing works with the adventure card? Sure. So if you have an adventure card and you want to take a merit badge, you automatically get a 20% discount, 25% discount, sorry. Um, and those are all now registered through experiencebasecamp.org. And what happens is you log in with the email that's tied to your adventure card and it will automatically give you any discounts that have uh, been approved for that thing. Um, also, we offer, we'll be offering some premium program, um, things like uh, unit uh, canoe trips that are staffed um, and some uh, outdoor rock climbing as well. Um, and some other things that we're working on and building, and those will be able to earn a discount as well, 25% uh, as well. That's awesome. Um, I think that's really exciting and a great opportunity to get some really cool workshops in. So uh, great value add for that $48 adventure card. Um, the other thing I want to say about the adventure uh, card. Oh, sorry, Tyler. Oh, no, go ahead. Just in the value the add. Card. Yeah, you get $50 off per week of camp that you buy. So if you're coming to day camp more than one week, you get $50 off for every week that you, you buy a week of camp. And that counts back towards your resident camps too. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, you know, the $48 for the base adventure card, what, uh, what can we do if we wanna upgrade? Say I have an adventure card for my scout. What if I want the family plan? How can I upgrade? Um, they can reach out to me and we, we will connect them with the person who can help them upgrade. Awesome. Uh, step back. Let's go to day camp. It's only five weeks away. I got a tiger cub. I want to come to camp. Do I need to bring my adult partner? That's a Derek question. Uh, so um, <clears throat> base camp is uh, operated, opened uh, to the public. So uh, because we are doing that, we have some different uh, insurance coverage in place, which allows us to have first graders participate um, in camp programs uh, and they do not have to have their adult partner there. Uh, we would like to see adult partners come because that is a very uh, integral part of the TIGER program and how 
as scouts, we believe uh, the program should operate. Uh, but as Allison talked before, Granite Base Camp is about taking down some of the barriers of scouting and allowing our families and uh, our scouts to have fun in a safe and controlled manner. So, um, so we are, are taking down one of those potential bar barriers, which is having an adult partner um, uh, come to day camp with their Tiger Cub aged scout. I will say though that I know that um, in the past there have been parent volunteers who came to support camp and those parents are welcome to do that. Um, I have a few emails that I'm waiting to, um, I was waiting for some information on and I will be responding to those families and uh, as well as answering the questions about adult uh, partners. So. Awesome, a uh, couple more questions. Uh, I just bought a card. How long should I expect for it to come in? And then, oh. uh, and tying that in, I'll give you a, a second one to add on to the other side. I'm coming to camp with my pack this fall for a weekend. What if I want to bring the whole group to come to the Granite Base Camp activities? How do I do that? Um, so let's ask the answer to the first question, uh, which is for it to come in the mail, it takes about a week. Um, our cards are printed in Spirit of Adventure um, and they are uh, hand printed, so to speak. It's not like you order it and it kicks into a machine and they just print out. Somebody else, actually, somebody actually has to do the work. Um, but they take about a week to come in. However, uh, you do not need them to book anything for camp. So what will happen when you um, make a reservation is you get a, con uh, as soon as you've bought your adventure card, your email is ready to go um, and you are uh, able to purchase your discounted uh, price uh, passes um, right away. Uh, and then if your card hasn't come and you print, uh, you print, bring your print confirmation, um, then I can, then we're all set. You don't necessarily need your, your actual card to come into camp. Uh, Tyler, can you remind me what the last part of that question was? Yeah, I'm, uh, we have a pack oh, that's figured. registered for the weekend this fall. They, you know, if they're coming in on a Friday night, they'll be there on Saturday. How do they get the whole pack to participate in those activities? Yep, so right now we're working on um, expanding Experience Base Camp to include group sales. It is one of the first things that we will work on in our third phase of building out that website. Um, so as of right now, you'll continue reserving in the same way that you do. Um, and then you can reach out to me and we will work on figuring out a way to, to support that. Right this minute, Experience Base Camp does not support uh, group sales. So you would have each individual family who would like to participate um, in Saturday program while you're at camp for the weekend, log in and register. Uh, also, because we can now take walk-ins because, we, uh, because we've moved forward in COVID, um, you could also register that morning. But if there's a large group of you, I would prefer not to have to register a lot of people all at once. Yeah, that's a, that's a great suggestion, Allison. And you know, the Experience Base Camp website, a lot of really cool features coming soon. So uh, a lot of hard work put into that. But I have this pack, you know, parents come along for weekend camping, may not be registered. They sign their kid up through the Granite Base Camp activities. They want to have a little fun, too, with their with their family program card. Do they need to fill out a medical form? They don't. They do for the pack and they do to be there for camp. However, we have because of that separate insurance that Derek talked about, um, we do not require a, an AB to be on the property for Granite Base Camp. Awesome. I'm going to go buy another adventure card. Too. Great info. Thank you. Um, one thing I do want to say, though, is that um, we are, we do, we love when parents participate with their kids. And so we want to make sure that you're registered too, um, so that you get the same value that they do. I have to say this really quick, Allison. It was noted that the, uh, your adventure card also gets you into other base camp opportunities, right? With other councils. So yes. uh, and that's a really great value add uh, with Spirit of Adventure and Narragansett. You can get to those other programs too. So it doesn't just have to be a DWC program. You can use, you have a reciprocal benefit, right? It's like a, it's like having the KOA card, but only for scouting activities and all kinds of fun stuff. So. Yeah, something valuable about going down to SOA as Spirit of Adventure is that they have a pool that's open year round. And so if you took your unit in February and did your swim test, you would get to skip that step 
on the day you show up at camp. Just saying. They have other other they have other premium programs that we um, that we just don't have yet. So thank you. Allison, great job. And if uh, for those of you uh, who have not yet been to a granite base camp program at Camp Carpenter, uh, what are you waiting for? It's uh, exciting. It's great. Uh, the camp is a buzz when uh, there's a program going on. And uh, Allison and her team have done a spectacular job in uh, bringing the scouting program to life and, and uh, making it fun and approachable for everyone. So uh, great job, Allison. And uh, to everyone on the call tonight, I Hope we see you there soon. Um, I will say that uh, we have one more spring date, which is June 5th. And then we are open all Saturdays in July, except for the holiday week um, and the first Saturday in August. We will be open. Uh, Camp Carpenter will have seven days of programming from July 5th through August 7th. Awesome job, Allison. I agree with Derek. And uh, it's no doubt that we know why Granite Base Camp's so popular. I mean, just your uh, enthusiasm wants me to just jump right in as well. So thank you very much. All right, next up we have membership and we have our new family engagement coordinator who supports units, Cindy DeFillip, DeFilpo. I'm sorry, I always mess it up, don't I? DeFilpo. Oh, you're good. <laughs> 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 it's about my eighth time. So I think and it's been so, pronounced about like 20 different, at least 20 different ways within any given week. So you did a really good job. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to turn it over to you and Derek and Tyler to talk about membership. So the floor is yours. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Cindy. And I'm going to actually share my screen more so so I don't have to see my face. Um, on the webinar. <laughs> and um, there we go. And um, we have a lot of really um, exciting updates for membership for you guys. So I can't wait to share it with you. Um, this is an email where you can reach our membership team. It's membership at nhscouting.org. We can help you with anything you need. And if you haven't noticed, we've had quite a few changes as in terms of recruiting resources and membership uh, communications with you guys lately. And if you haven't noticed, I hope you join us soon. So first off, we have the Membership Monday newsletter. And this is a weekly newsletter with tips, resources, and unit best practices. There's always a little highlight of a unit um within the email that is doing a great job spreading the good word on scouting thursday we have lunchtime live and that's 12 30 on the daniel webster council facebook page no autographs please guys yet yeah, okay but um i'll try to get those signed soon but this is a casual chat about membership retention and some great programming and uh recruitment event ideas and this is really just a way for us to communicate uh, during your lunch break, um, or if you have a minute to check in, it's usually about 10 or 15 minutes long. And I always invite people to comment and ask questions and interact as we're, as we're doing the live, and it's really fun. You can catch the recordings in the video library of the Facebook page if you've missed them, which I'm sure you haven't. Next, we have done a little facelift to the Membership and Marketing Hub. The tools are easier to find, and there's more tools at your fingertips, including a new live calendar for easier booking for our mobile-based unit. So check it out, guys, because the mobile-based unit is a great way to recruit more scouts into your program. This unit can be used at any community event that you would like to have a presence at, and I highly recommend it because you can do BB guns, archery, there's a gaga ball pit, and spike ball. And it's super, super fun. And literally the kids just swarm towards it. So make sure you have all the tools you need right on hand to really get those kids signed up for scouting right then and there. And lastly, I want to um, let you know that we're doing a monthly membership meeting because you just can't get enough 
of hearing my voice, I'm sure. <laughs> Michael's already laughing. <laughs> um, so every month we're gonna have a meeting between all the membership volunteers. So if you're outgoing, you like to talk to people, you're a people person, you like greeting new families, please join me on June 24th for our little campfire chat. We're just gonna talk about some questions about recruitment, what the new plans are, you know, coming up as we move into the fall and, um, and just talk about some challenges and come up with some solutions. Wanna remind you about some awesome incentives that council is running right now. Guys, seven units have claimed the top prize of $200 so far in the president's membership challenge. This is for new scouts that are joining your unit or have joined since January of 2021 through the end of June. That is coming up faster than any of us probably want to admit, right? So you just fill out the President's Challenge form, which is on the Membership and Marketing Hub. And then you can also award a deserving scouter or supporter that really helped you um, gain more scouts for your unit, the exclusive President's Point. Also, we have Recruit a Friend, um, which is if a scout brings a buddy and they remain registered through rechartering, your unit receives a $25 credit. That's all great stuff. So don't miss these meetings, guys. The next really important meeting is a multi-council membership kickoff. That's right. We're kicking off membership in June, June 10th, as a matter of fact, at 7 p.m. This is a non, uh, you're going to have all the information on non-traditional recruitment ideas, how to really get those bring a buddy efforts to work. We'll help you increase your community presence and make the best of it. And what do we all do now that we have all these new scouts? Plus, you'll learn council's role in membership this year and the volunteers' role in membership and how we can really work as a team. But like I said, it's multi-council, so the more the merrier, right? So definitely join us and check that out. Lots of good information there. Again, the monthly membership campfire chat is June 24th at 7. Bring your questions, your pain points, the ideas, and any of your recruitment plans. And I'd like to announce that workshops are coming very soon. We're gonna have a writing workshop to help you write those press releases and media announcements, a social media marketing workshop, how to take the best photos to really showcase your scouts and your unit, um, and um, your winning websites. We're gonna go over and look at your websites and what we can do to really help people learn more about scouting. So a quick reminder, please start thinking about your unit's flyers if you plan on distributing flyers this year. I know this sounds crazy. You're saying, Cindy, it's only May. Listen, guys, we don't have a lot of people doing printing work now at council, okay? So get those flyers out there. It can be a generic flyer with information about your unit. You can download free QR code to your unit's website. You can download one that links right to your unit's calendar and then have those flyers approved by your school district superintendent, whoever you have to go through ahead of time. So that way you can really have a clear plan on how you're gonna get the word out starting early, early in September. You can request flyer printing through the membership and marketing hub. And you can, uh, and I'm also suggesting that we start thinking about your program calendars for the year. Try to have a committee meeting this summer and really work in those recruitment nights and think about your, the best planning to really get new families in early. And don't forget, book the mobile-based unit for those community events. And guys, bookmark the membership and marketing hub. You can scan this QR code. It'll bring you right there. Start it, save it. Love it, screenshot it, whatever you like. That's all I got. Great job, Cindy. Exciting times for membership growth in Daniel Webster Council. June 10th, multi-council kickoff. Check out the council calendar, the link in the uh, newsletter. If you go to the membership marketing hub, click the newsletter tab on the left-hand side. You can see every membership Monday newsletter we've sent out the last three weeks and there's also even a little spot you can make sure that you're on the list to get the council communication so a great spot and we post those uh, newsletters on facebook on the council facebook page and our volunteer forum so uh, a lot of good details coming out 
Um, and don't miss out on, on June 10th uh, for our uh, kickoff for membership. Awesome job, Cindy. I've seen her work and she just keeps doing awesome work. So thank you so much for joining our council and show, spreading all of this to everyone uh, you can. So the multi-council that's Boston and Providence Council is gonna be on June 10th, is that right? And it's a way to share even more ideas with uh, other scouters. So thank you very much, great job. We also have some members of the national staff who are going to be presenting uh, during that webinar as well that evening. That's awesome. Really good information, so thank you. Okay, well next up, let's welcome our new development director in charge of fundraising and development, Bianca Bodwin has joined us and Bianca, it's all yours. Thanks for being on. Oh, thank you, Michael. And, and you pronounced my last name perfectly, so. <laughs> um, hi, I'm, I'm Bianca Bodwin. I'm just gonna also share my screen here. Three weeks in as a development director at the Scouts and uh, really excited to, to be a part of it. And I am playing to, not too nicely here. Okay, here we go. Um, just want to give some updates about upcoming fundraisers and ways to be involved with the scouts and uh, and raise the much needed funds so we can get more kids involved in the scouts and uh, makes it a little easier on membership side um, if the, the more money that we raise. Um, if you need to reach me, this is my contact information and I'm happy to help with any ideas that you might have with fundraising or get you um, in the right direction as needed. So uh, a couple weeks ago, actually a week and a half ago, we had the Winnie Derby and we had a thousand anglers that joined us and we have uh, have the estimate of over $55,000 that was raised. We'd love to say thank you to all the staff that were able to join us, as well as volunteers, Ray Meyer, Charles Fisher, Chris Yates, Mike Teeger, and, and even including, um, we had a little visitor, a visitor from one of the scout units, I believe um, out of Bedford that came in and helped, as well as a lot of our staffs and uh, significant others that joined and helped uh, throughout the weekend. It was a great time. Uh, next, uh, in June, we are going to be participating in New Hampshire Gives, and so please get social with us. If you're not able to contribute, if you can just make sure you share the post with your family and friends, and that way we can get more people involved in donating through the New Hampshire Gives program, and it's a great opportunity to capture additional funds from other um, agencies that are willing to uh, match those gifts throughout that 24 hour period. Spring Appeal is going out and it is uh, been sent out, I think uh, Jay had said about a, a couple weeks ago. Um, and uh, so that will be raising additional funds for the, uh, the Daniel Webster Council as well. Friends of Scouting, um, is a program, and let's see if I can do this right, because I actually added a little stuff to it. It's a family campaign that you can get involved um, and get the board involved as well as the community involved to raise money for Scout In. We have a campaign goal of $300,000 and currently to date, we've raised 142,000. So thank you all for participating in the Friends of Scouting program, what you're doing out in the community, talking to your family and friends, letting them know what the Friends of Scouting program is, is, is working and uh, we are well underway to reach our goal. Wanna say thank you to Chris Cooper for all of his assistance in the campaign. And if you have any additional questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to Chris or myself or anybody on the council and, uh, and we're here to help. Uh, coming up pretty quickly, we have the Golf Classic, 
uh, for the Cross Insurance Golf Classic. And for this year, we are actually honoring uh, Christopher Sharp from Cross Insurance as our honoree, a uh, longtime supporter of the Boy Scouts. We have a goal of 100 golfers and there are sponsorship opportunities available. So if you, your business or your, the business that you work for is interested in becoming a sponsor, feel free to reach out to me. We'd be happy to have more people involved. And we also would love to have as many golfers on the course in Portsmouth as possible. And from my understanding, this is, this is the big thing, the big fundraiser is popcorn. And so right now, um, if you haven't gone online, you, it's time to, to get your, your, uh, your group all signed up, get signed up today. Popcorn is coming and we have a full agenda coming up through the fall. We also have a training date on June 17th that will be available through Microsoft Teams and hosted by the Trails End. And we'll have an additional one in July. We'll, we'll send that date out as soon as it's been announced. Another fun and exciting event that will be coming up is, is an over the edge event. Um, we have signed up three of us, our staff, and we are working on coordinating additional volunteer team of three people. Uh, but currently we have Jay, Allison and myself that will be going over the edge if we can raise the money. Um, and raise additional funds for the Scouts, as well as awareness of the Scouts program here in New Hampshire. We'll have additional communications and dates coming soon about the Women's in Leadership reception, the Endowment reception, Distinguished Given Awards Dinner. Those dates will be coming out for this fall and winter. Uh, we'll have those out, I'd say, probably in the next month or so. Are there any other updates, Derek, Jay? I just wanna say really excited about your enthusiasm. One of the things that most people might not know about Bianca is that she has been involved with uh, a number of other nonprofits uh, in the past. Uh, so she brings to us a, a whole bunch of really new ideas and we're just excited about her enthusiasm uh, particularly as it relates to the mission of scouting uh, and all of her fundraising capabilities. She's really, really good. Uh, worked with, uh, um, you know, a previous nonprofit as executive director. Uh, so she just brings a tremendous amount of talent to our team. So we're really proud to have you on board, Bianca. Thank you, Jay. I'm really excited to, to join the scouts. And I know that I've said this, uh, one, of the, one of the biggest things I think that um, excites me about the Scouts is really just focusing on fundraising that's going to take care of our kids and the future leaders of our community. And I think the Scouts offer that for boys and girls across New Hampshire. And the more money I raise, the more Scouts, more individuals that can get involved from different communities that might not be able to have that opportunity. So I'm really excited to join the team. And uh, I think Today's Thursday, so uh, three weeks today uh, as, as part of the Scouts. So thank you. And are there any questions? And I might need your help, Tyler, on how to unshare my screen. So I'm really good at fundraising, but sometimes technology is not always my friend. No problem, Bianca. We'll, uh, we'll get it taken care of. For you. Okay. Hold on one second. Oh, um, I, found, I found the stop share. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> Great job, Bianca. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Yeah, and I think, is there any questions? Uh, no fundraising oh. questions. I okay. think we're, we're good to go. Okay. Awesome job. Thank you, Bianca, and welcome aboard. We're very happy you're here. And as Jay said, I think you're going to bring some really great info and excitement for our fundraising team. So that's great. Okay, so now last but certainly not least, we have uh, our CEO, uh, Jay Geary, who's going to talk to us about uh, the recent uh, bankruptcy and add some clarity on where we're at both nationally and I believe also Daniel Webster Council. So Jay, it's all yours. 
Yeah, thanks, Mike. And I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to talk to everybody. Although I have to say that you always give me the tough subjects. Everybody gets to talk about all the fun stuff like program and recruiting new kids and all the fun things that are going on. And then you give me a topic like bankruptcy. Uh, so uh, I understand that that's near and dear to everybody's heart relative to the mission. And, uh, uh, and it's a, a very difficult subject uh, for us to all to navigate. And in all seriousness, um, you know, one that we are all concerned about, right? Because we read articles in the newspaper and uh, depending on which side of the litigation is speaking in regards to what's happening with the Boy Scouts, you get two flavors of, of, of uh, commentary. Uh, and some of it's you know pretty inflammatory against the mission of the Boy Scouts, sadly. And some of it is in defense of many of the great things that the Boy Scouts of America have done in our heritage and within our organization. And so, um, you know, this is tough. Uh, it's a, this issue of child abuse is a societal issue. It's not one of just the Boy Scouts. It is something that is prevalent in all aspects of life. Um, uh, and if you really study or review the is issues surrounding child abuse and you understand what's happened within the organization, you can quickly discern that uh, we are, as an organization, not immune to uh, child abuse, obviously, based on the fact that we are going through a bankruptcy protection process as a direct result of litigation, um, which occurred as a result of people being harmed by scouts, uh, scout leaders and volunteers, sadly. Um, and in that, in that tone, um, there are a few, um, I think, bright spots in terms of what's happened in the history of our organization. And that is that you know, when we evaluate the claims, uh, and as most of you have read, there's 84,000 claims that have been submitted nationwide. Uh, that, that is a lot, and any one claim is too much. Um, but amongst 84,000 claims, when you, when you uh, do the math against our membership numbers and our registration numbers, the population percentages are no greater in scouting than they are in society. Um, based on the number of registrants we've had historically through the BSA. That's not to downplay the concern. Um, it's just to communicate um, some perspective so that everybody understands that this isn't a Boy Scout problem, it is a societal problem. One of the things I think the Boy Scouts have done a great job of uh, when we evaluate the claims is that we've learned that 90% of the claims occurred 30 years or more ago. Uh, and when you look at the trajectory of the program and where we stand today, we are clearly running a safer program today than we did 30 years ago. Um, and that is much to the efforts of the organization, the volunteers, the parents uh, to be more informed about how to protect youth. Uh, we teach all of our volunteers with mandatory training, peer to peer training, uh, and all sorts of uh, education on the barriers to abuse that, that we have in scouting. Um, you open up the handbook and we address the issue of uh, youth protection in every handbook that we provide to a family. And, and you all know that. So, um, but, you know, I think as leaders, it's incumbent on all volunteers that are out there to communicate to non-scout families how safe we really are. Um, today, uh, you know, with the with the uh, issues of background checks we do on our on our leadership, and you know, we put together as an organization a field of experts to put together a curriculum that is unsurpassed in comparison to other youth organizations. Uh, and I and I mention all that under the umbrella of bankruptcy because uh, you are all advocates and stewards of the mission, and the BSA will prevail. We will survive. Uh, through this. Uh, I'm convinced of it. Uh, the process of litigation is um, we're constantly receiving updates from the national office, as well as an organizational entity that's protecting uh, the interests of uh, the Daniel Webster Council called the Local Council Committee. And those, those individuals have an, periodically informed us that there is a mediation process underway 
And while the, the media tells a story that may sound different, there is progress being made. And one of the first points of progress that was made was the um, a settlement amount that was offered by one of the major insurance carriers of a $600 million settlement. Uh, and that was significant to the mediation process because what that did was bring real dollars to the table uh, to try to bring settlement to the number of claimants that have come forward. In addition to that, 96% uh, of the councils across the country put forth a number uh, to, and this is for public information, and it's been well documented in the articles of an amount of 300 million between all of the councils. Uh, Daniel Webster Council did put forward a, a valuation amount um, as part of that $300 million settlement to make a voluntary contribution to a victim trust. And while I can't disclose that amount, um, what I can share is that we are at the table to um, try to help resolve this issue for the BSA and, and pursue, and our board has, has agreed to participate in that uh, to make a voluntary contribution. Uh, that doesn't come from donation dollars. It doesn't come from Friends of Scouting or popcorn or camp attendance. It's not from fees or activity expenses um, directly related to our, the delivery of the mission. It uh, will come from, in part, uh, part of our unrestricted endowment uh, when, when we reach a settlement value uh, for the most part. Um, that's still being mediated. Uh, that process will continue on uh, up to a deadline that the national office has imposed with the court in August. Uh, and that's really as a result of the fact that the BSA nationally will run out of money um, to continue to pay legal fees and attorneys related to uh, uh, the settlement. Uh, so there is a, time is of the essence for all parties to come to uh, an agreed upon amount. Um, so, you know, expect to hear more news. Uh, certainly, you know, you're going to see more in the newspaper in the coming weeks ahead. Um, but I truly believe that the BSA in the long run will survive uh, and, and we will we will end up in a healthy place uh, once we can can get the issues surrounding bankruptcy, uh, at least in regards to the litigation behind us or the chapter 11 process behind us. Um, there is no single greater risk to the mission of Boy Scouts, in my opinion, than the issue of membership. Uh, so I'm really excited about Cindy's energy as it relates to membership. And that directly correlates to bankruptcy because the credibility of the BSA has been under attack for a while. And we've also dealt with COVID-19. And, you know, renewing parents' confidence about how safe scouting can be and running safe programs like we will this summer, uh, you know, to get kids back in the outdoors. All of that is really critical to us because, you know, we took some severe hits in our registration numbers. And, and I wanna bring the two together for everybody because I think, you know, it, it really relies on the fact that we need every registered adult leader, every person out there who cares about the mission, who loves scouting, to get kids involved, we have to get back to recruitment. We have to build those cub packs back up with registration uh, because come August, you know, this settlement amount will go out. There'll be a ton of news. All kinds of things will hit the papers and it's grassroots. It comes down to the local community, you know, get, get Granite Base Camp out there, um, you know, tell families about the opportunities to visit the programs we're offering at Camp Carpenter to try scouting before you buy it. You know, come, just come visit. Go to one of the Granite Base activities and do a fun activity. Um, get your scouting unit to sign up the mobile recruitment, uh, you know, trailer that we have set up uh, to do all those fun things because, you know, you're all going to need those Cub Scouts. If you're in a Scout BSA troop, uh, you're not going to survive past five years, if you don't start recruiting Cub Scouts through your packs. Uh, so, you know, bankruptcy aside, the financial aspect aside, you know, the concern we all have for the mission, um, the only solution we have coming out of this is to just get back to recruiting Cub Scouts again. Uh, and so we're eager to do that this September. So I know there's probably a few questions related to bankruptcy. Some people may want to know about fees. 
our fee registration fee increases, you know, part of those fee increases, it's, it's been widely publicized that the reason why there was a fee increase from $60 to $66 is because the cost of liability insurance went up. Uh, and so, you know, it's, it's going to be a little bit more expensive to participate in scouting. That's just a harsh reality. So that's where you are paying for, in part, the result of some of the issues surrounding the bankruptcy is through your registration costs, because liability insurance, to buy the insurance for liability protection, it's going to be more expensive because we've been hit by the litigation. Um, the BSA has promised that those fees won't increase beyond a rate of what the fee increase already occurred in 2020 to 2021 of $6. So we would project to units that your fee might increase to roughly about $72. I don't know that for certain. We're waiting to see what that result will be. It's supposed to be announced within the next couple of days by June 1st is what we're told. As soon as we get that information, we'll, we'll share it. Uh, we know that that's gonna create some challenges for families and that's why we've kept our local insurance costs down for units. You may remember we were gonna increase the insurance to $12 per family. Uh, and we put a hold on all of that uh, to try to give units some relief. So we're doing the best we can at the local council level to try to not create more pain points for all of you. Um, and then just in terms of uh, the settlement, when the settlement does occur, um, that will actually protect Daniel Webster Council from any further litigation against any claims brought against us. And there are some. Uh, and so uh, this will clear the slate, uh, if you will, um, in terms of any potential future liability or uh, from attorneys suing us for past issues that have occurred within the council up to a specified date set by the court. Uh, and so that's all the reason why we need to be even more vigilant about making sure that our scouts are safe and all the things that we do. Uh, and it will also protect the charter organization. So uh, it's really, really important for the BSA to come to a settlement and to come to an agreement um, by August. Uh, so in a nutshell, I, I mean, that's what I have to share with everybody here. Um, we will continue to communicate to families as we progress through this. So we won't keep you in the dark. Um, as we as we begin to get greater clarity on what's going to happen with the BSA uh, in res, in regards to the settlement, so um, any questions? Not, uh, not a question, Jay, but just you know, one of the things I just want to reemphasize. You know, you mentioned about um, potential for these guys to see a fee increase this year, and you know, I I, I just want to uh, uh, reiterate that point is that you know it's May. Um, and we're letting you guys know now that you really should be expecting a fee increase. I know there's not a lot of units on, on this call tonight, um, and a lot will say that they didn't hear it, but, but we're, we're letting you know now that the minimum national fee increase will, uh, you know, based on what we know, will be at least $6. And so, you know, you guys really do need to plan for that. You know, that's why it's going to be important uh, that, you know, Bianca came, uh, uh, you know, John, we lost John Rainville. We got, you know, we upped our game with Bianca uh, and she's now part of our team, which is awesome uh, and, and everything else. And so that's why it's really going to be important that, you know, as we do, you know, we just did the maple syrup fundraiser, as we do the hike a as we do the, uh, the popcorn, it's really going to be to your benefit uh, to make sure that you guys participate in that. So, um, you know, Jay, you mentioned the DWC insurance fee as well. That is coming back this year as part of the recharter. And again, just so everybody knows, we're not going to go up to the full uh, $12. Um, it, you know, as what was communicated last year, it will go to $8. Um, but, you know, just, I just, again, just so everybody's aware of, last year we contributed, um, we contributed, uh, we waived the fee in its entirety, and we basically pulled that out of the endowment. As Jay just got done talking to you, saying, you know, we are going to have to pay something uh, and contribute, and that is going to come out of our unrestricted endowment. So we are going to really need your guys' help and support this year in terms of, uh, of this. And, you know, as you talk to your fellow units that are out there, you know, let them know.
know that 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 it has been communicated that uh, to expect the fee increase uh, this upcoming year. Yeah, and John, I just you know I want to follow up to just one more time, not to beat the membership pulpit, but uh, it is really important, right? Because uh, everything we do within the organization, at the end of the day, the mission of the Scouts is to prepare young people to make ethical choices in their lives by instilling in them the, the values found in the Scout Oath and Law, right? That's the mission. Um, our membership dropped from at end of December from 6,000 plus youth down to 4,300 now as a result of recharter. And that was directly proportional to COVID-19 and the fear amongst Cub Scout families to re-engage in activities uh, and do scouts. Uh, there is going to be a demand. Families are going to wanna to get back to letting their children do activities. Please make sure that families choose scouts. We have to get the word out about recruiting our scouts. That's why the presidential challenge is out. That's why Cindy is having a weekly newsletter and, and, and having her live TV show every week. Um, it's why you're gonna see a ton of enthusiasm around membership recruitment this fall. We've just got to get our youth back to our families, back to choosing scouting. That's the single number one thing we can do in reaction to the bankruptcy when we conclude it in August. Yeah. yeah the, you know, the other thing, Jay, I, I just want to quickly bring up too is, is that, you know, last October as, 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 a, as an organization, you know, we made some um, structural changes in terms of how, how we're organized, you know, and, you know, as everybody knows, you know, there was the elimination of district executives uh, and we, re, we, we reset ourselves, right? And so what we decided as an organization was that, you know, we needed to make sure that we had a dedicated focus, somebody who's focusing and helping the units with respect to some of their fundraising aspects. We needed to make sure that there was a dedicated focus on membership and that there was a single point uh, a person that they can go to. You know, if, if a lot of people think about our DEs for a second in terms of what they were doing, um, they were one person handling multiple tasks and sometimes they got it right, sometimes they didn't get it right, and sometimes they just plain forgot. And so, you know, what we're really trying to do here is eliminate some of those uh, uh, overloads that occurred with respect to, to our DEs and, and trying to focus, you know, uh, specific areas with specific people, you know, and that's why Josh Boucher, for example, you know, he's our single point of contact for unit, he's our unit serving executive, you know, from a program perspective, we have uh, Skip Chase, who is our single point of contact, you know, we have Cindy, you know, you're our single point of contact for membership and Bianca, you're our single point of contact for, for finance. And so, you know, it, it was important for us to restructure um, and trust us. It was not an easy decision by any means. Um, what, I'll, what I'll share with you is that, um, uh, you know, the decision to reorganize was one that was made, uh, was, was based on volunteers. Volunteers made the decision in terms of the structural changes. Um, and, 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 you know, so I just wanna make sure that everybody understands it, it was not something that any of us wanted, but it was something that was needed based on the situation that was presented to us. Yeah, and it was really about overall stability for the organization long-term, right? I mean, Correct. you know, ensuring that the longevity of the council would survive the bankruptcy and COVID-19 and our units would continue to retain the level of service that they had grown accustomed to by having people they can still contact. Right. Uh, and the right. ticketing system is a big piece of that, too. There's accountability on the ticketing system now to ensure that every person's question gets answered and that there's a receipt for that question and that it gets executed. Yeah. So um, so, you know, it's a it's a complex situation. Um, you know, let's not lose sight of what we have to do. Right. We have to have fun. We have to do a lot of really great things for kids uh, and we have to support families and families are going to need us. Uh, we just have to invite them. They have to know that we exist uh, and we will survive. So. Yeah. Hey, Tyler, can you um, just provide to the panel, uh, to everybody where they can, um, you know, if they do have a question or an issue, uh, the email address that they can send that to. So that way everybody has it and it'll be in the chat box for them to be able to uh, grab. 
Yeah, absolutely, John. Uh, great point. So anytime that you need help from uh, any member of the council staff or uh, you don't know who to contact about a question, uh, real simple way, you can uh, just email us at support at nhscouting.org. Uh, real simple uh, way to plug it in. Um, that'll connect into our ticketing system. You'll get a notification that we received your message uh, and then we'll follow up. And of course, if at any time that you feel that uh, the communication uh, that you're getting, say you didn't get a response uh, that you're hoping to get or uh, a little bit of a delay that you're hoping to uh, get a little bit faster, um, if you just flag another ticket, uh, drop another ticket in there, um, I review the tickets when they come in. So uh, I'm able to uh, help our entire member care team uh, as the team leader uh, get you the support that you need. Uh, so uh, support at nhscouting.org, you can drop a note in there. Uh, additionally, we do have uh, a knowledge base. This is gonna be growing some more, uh, but we have a couple uh, really important uh, and useful uh, articles that you can review, ask questions. There's a box where you can search a question. Uh, and then of course there's a form. Uh, if the information is in there. So what we're doing is we're compiling questions that everybody's asking so we can grow our knowledge base and have a, a single source of information for, uh, for people to seek out. Um, so that's all available there. Support at nhscouting.org that comes to our member care team. Uh, we'll be able to capture all those details uh, and get uh, the right contact for you. Um, in addition, you know, Jay talked a little bit about uh, the bankruptcy. I'll put a link in the um, in the chat, bsarestructuring.org. That'll get you all the uh, information that's available uh, to all of us, even me. Uh, it's what I go to as my, my resource of what's available for me uh, to learn a little bit more about what's going on. And, um, you know, we're just really excited to continue to uh, keep scouting strong and, and granite strong here in the granite state. So, Thank you, Tyler. Thank you, everyone. I think the information that was presented tonight was very helpful, awesome excitement and enthusiasm. I will say from my involvement as a kid to an adult, uh, the values and morals I have learned and picked up in scouting are critical. I don't see other organizations that can offer and teach these, and it's so important, and that's why I'm so big on telling youth and other parents about it, because where can you go that you could learn this, especially today for boys and girls to have this in their lives. So any other comments from any of our presenters tonight? Um, yeah, I do, unfortunately. So this is why you don't you want to limit me. Um, you know, this is more of a reminder to to units, and um, you know, it's something that we as a council have been seeing more and more of, um, and that's bullying, and it's bullying in scouting, and it's bullying that is either coming uh, from uh, youth or it's coming from adults. And uh, you know, what I'm going to say is is that we scout there is we don't, there is no place for bullying in scouting whatsoever. And that, you know, if you guys see or observe bullying, you know, please step in, stop it. Um, and then, and then report it. Uh, and let, let us know that you guys are, are, are experiencing a bullying situation. Um, you know, the number one complaint that I'm going to say that probably Jay and I receive is around bullying. And sometimes when we get those complaints, um, we get them after the fact and whereby the unit themselves are trying to uh, take care of the situation themselves. And, and it goes beyond what their capacity or capability is. And so we then come in and, and try to fix the situation uh, after the fact. But please, you know, do what you can. Um, bullying is a big problem that is out there. It is greatly affecting our youth. Um, I don't want to read, and nor do I want to see something where a youth has committed suicide because they were either bullied or cyber bullied or whatever it might be. And so please protect our youth. Please look out after them and, uh, and, and everything. So again, if you see it, please help us. Thank you. 
Great point, John, an important one. And with that, I think we'll wrap up our council-wide roundtable. Again, I'll ask any other comments before we wrap up. Otherwise, we sure appreciate all of you attendees for joining us tonight. Hope the information was helpful and informative. And we'll be out there with uh, announcements of future council-wide roundtables for you as well. Thank you again for joining.